I'm Chris Johns, Editor-in-Chief of National Geographic Magazine. Our single topic issue for April of 2010 came about not from a focus group that said National Geographic Magazine should do an issue on water. It did not come from a marketing group that said you can uh, increase the vitality of your brand with an issue on water. It did not come from an advertising group who said you can sell more ads if you do a issue on water. Our special issue on water came 19 years ago in a small church at the foothills of Virginia's Blue Ridge Mountains as I was holding my daughter as she was being baptized. And I saw the holy water on her forehead <laughs> reflected with the uh, uh, stained glass windows and the, I was overwhelmed with the beauty of this image. At the time we were doing uh, a 13th National Geographic magazine issue on water in North America. And I, I came to the editors and, as a photographer, I was a photographer at National Geographic for more than 20 years. And I said, I've got this great idea for this, this issue you're doing on water in North America. Why don't we do the spiritual, spirituality of water? This deep connection we have, this in virtually every major religion, ceremonially, you can think of. From washing before reading the Quran, from baptisms to Taoism, to the Ganges, these, these sacred rivers. So we decided more than two years ago to do an issue devoted entirely to the world's fresh water supply. David Griffin uh, came to me, our, David's our director of photography, and said, here's some photographers we might want to think about. Uh, some of these photographers have done uh, work that is related to water, some have not. Uh, we also wanted a variety of photographic styles. We wanted to have different notes. And putting together an issue like that's a symphony. And we want uh, louder photographers, quieter photographers. We want uh, large format photographers like Ed Bertinsky. We want photographers like Lynn Johnson who are peeling away layers with her Leica and getting these intimate moments. Uh, so it was great fun to, uh, to assemble that group of photographers. We believe uh, in single-minded purpose. The photographers were working on water and water only. Uh, that way we feel we provide an environment for them to take the best pictures of their career. That's something we try to do with every assignment, is we want to provide the opportunity for a photographer to do his or her best work of their life. is that water is life. It's this precious resource that constitutes and is a piece of each and every one of us. What we want to do is have people appreciate and understand the blessing of water, and but to also stop and think about the, the world we live in now and really what is our capacity. Do we need to conserve more? Most likely. I mean, there are all kinds of water issues uh, before us that are involved with climate change or involved with water quality. There are a myriad of issues that are pressing and terribly important. Let's stop about it. Let's stop and think about solutions. Let's not take it for granted. Let's celebrate water and let's all collectively make a difference. A partnership with the Annenberg space is perfect for both of us. We're both community-oriented organizations. We're not for-profit organizations. We want to reach the public in new and powerful ways and we want to celebrate the power of photography. And what I really love about Annenberg is it's not just photography. It is quite often specifically photojournalism. And of course photojournalism to me is a very broad umbrella. You can see that in the photographers we chose and the kind of photography we publish in our magazine. But we want to publish photographs and we want to work with Annenberg and bring to light photographer, photographers and their photography that can make the world a better place to live.